and David Seiler, brought to you by Paranormal Inc., right here on WLFE DB Radio. Well, hello everybody! Welcome to Step Into the Paranormal, episode 19. Boy, we we're got coming a, up. We're coming up on a year almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving it. But uh, we got a show for you tonight. Um, it's going to be very interesting. We went to the Princess House last night, and uh, later on in the show, we've got some very, very interesting evidence. Pull up your chair and get comfortable and <coughs> settle in. I think we're going to run a little bit over our allotted yep. one hour tonight because we have so much we want to get to everybody. Um, yep. One thing I want to tell everybody right here at the bottom, you'll see www.paranormalinc.net. At the very top is our YouTube link, and beneath that is our Facebook link. Please, please, please go to that. Um, I've already posted three videos that are going to be full videos, but I'm going to hit some clips from it uh, during the show. But the three videos from last night are just amazing videos. Hey, I got some exciting news real quick before our first uh, caller calls in. What you got? Uh, two weeks we will be at uh, the Samuel Miller Mansion in Columbia, PA. woo And... Just added today, man. We got a very special guest. Who we got? Check this out. Oh, we got the Maven Medium, Kelly Miller, coming. Woohoo! Um, be a chance to have a meet and greet with Kelly. She's going to speak for a few minutes, and it's it's going to be good, man. Nice. It's nice, going to be good. Nice. We're excited to get back and do some work with Kelly. Um, she's also going to be with uh, the event on April fourth in Essex, Maryland. And, of course, at the Bash 2020 in July. Oh, well, we got uh, Ted Van Sun watching. We Teddy, got what's up, brother? Andrew. We got Kelly Miller. Uh, we got uh, Anna. We got James. We got Eric Julian. How you doing? Kathy Eisenhart. We've got Angel. I'm not. Even, I'm going to butcher your last name, and I apologize, my dear. Fuentes. Hopefully I said that How right. How the hell can you not... I pronounce can, Fuentes. I can, hey, Cisco. What's up, Angel? Cisco. <laughs> Cisco. We got Peggy. We got Bill Kleins. Uh, Kelts. Excuse me. Bill Kelts. See? Uh, dyslexics of the world untie. But uh, Chris Thomas, Paul Bishop. We got a whole bunch of people Paul watching. Bishop is going to be our first caller. Yeah, baby. Paul, Paul you want to call in now? Call us. Give us a shout, Paul. We're ready for you, Tim brother. Conwell. I thought you were going to say uh, Tim Conway. <laughs> My brother, hey, my brother from another mother, Greg Klein. How you doing, bro? He's uh, one of my Masonic brothers. So. I thought you were going to say massage. No, Masonic. <laughs> the Masons. Yo, this stuff right here. <laughs> yeah. So, and Tim, hey, how you doing? Uh, Jen, Jen, uh, Jenny B. So we got a lot of people Jenny watching. B. Yeah. That sounds like a singer, Jenny B. Yeah. It's Jenny B. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. I can't wait to get the evidence from last night. I haven't even seen yet because the the big hoopla was over the isolation session. Yeah. So. And due to the, the what was going on last night, I, I never had a chance to see anything because I was the one doing the isolation. Yeah, we session. we, we so threw him in the corner. Apparently, they're supposed to blow my mind with evidence, which yeah, I yeah. don't see happening. But so, so now the later on before since we we don't have our call yet, um, the clip I'm going to show is a compilation of several of the really cool points that happened, but not all of them. You're going to have to go to the YouTube channel and watch the whole thing. Session one is about 30-some minutes. Mm. Session two is about 20-some minutes. And then we actually have a Phasma Box uh, session where we got some really, really cool things. So, um, But session one, really, when you watch the whole thing, Ernie ended up having to stop midway because he was coming in so fast, and we were asking we went, questions. I went through a period of, like, silence. Where it was, and that's when I would cover my ears so I wouldn't hear you guys. But then the interaction was coming so rapidly, I couldn't get every yep. word out in time. You know what I yep. mean? So I was touching on what I thought was keywords. You, you follow me? Yep, so yep, yep. Awesome, awesome. So apparently it was lining up. There's our first caller. All right, here we go. You had a green button. There he is. Hello. Hang on one second. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hello. This is Ernie. I'm and good. How so, are you? So we got Paul, Jaden's, Troy, and somebody else. It, his phone went dark second. Asia. She's my researcher. <laughs> Hi. Greetings and welcome. 
for those listening Hello? and viewing uh, on the line, we got Death Pet Paranormal out of Portland, Oregon, with their team leader Paul Bishop. Paul, uh, tell us a little bit about your team, my friend, and uh, you know how you guys met, where you guys are at, what you guys are up to, and all that good stuff. Well, um, I originally started Death Bat Paranormal. I kind of started out private investigating ten years ago. Um, but then again, it really wasn't death bad. It really wasn't anything except for a, a clueless kid going around and looking for spirituality and trying to identify the unknown. Um, so, um, you know, it, it was definitely one of those things that, uh, it took about maybe, you know, like I said, 10 years of adapting and, and going around and getting to know people and stuff like that. Um, yeah, eventually whenever I created death bat paranormal, uh, I got into, uh, it was in 2015 whenever I brought it in, and we had uh, we had I had about maybe four or five members from actually from a high school that I went to, mm-hmm. and we were actually I took them we all went to a Waverly Hills Sanatorium, um, which completely went wrong um, because when we actually went into Waverly Hills, um, there was a lot of things that happened. I know that I personally had scratch marks on my body. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do know that it was a lot of other guys that were, you know, really in fear because they heard screams, they heard things going on in there, phenomena that could not be explained. Uh, the place was just a hell pit of a vortex from hell. And um, all of a sudden, I slowly had each one of those boys. So there were some tough boys, hmm. and there were some football players and stuff. But those boys, I mean, they slowly just started dying off. And uh, I'll wait till I got to my last one, and he stuck with me for about a week more after that Waverly Hills investigation, and, and then he wanted off the team. So, you know, I didn't get nobody on the team for a good long time because it really hurt me. And how I many? I started trying to uh, investigate myself. Paul, how many? Uh, to... How many members does Death Bat Death Bat have right now? Right now, on how many we have total? Let's see. There's you as the leader. Yeah. There's Stacia, the researcher, Janet, and me. As lead investigators, Richie as the guest, guest camera, camera yeah. man. So that's a total. If you put four it together, four, four and a half, yeah, <laughs> somewhere along the lines of that. <laughs> I think you guys forgot someone. <laughs> uh oh. Oh yeah, Ozzy Wonder Dog. Yeah, we have, we have Ozzy, uh, which is uh, Stacia, my researcher's dog. Uh, as you guys do know, that animals kind of do pick up on paranormal presence right. um, a lot easier than we can. So we believe in, we definitely are happy to have Stacia and Ozzy on the team because, I mean, it can definitely help us kind of sense and be able to see where things are. You have to, um, Paul, you have to go back through my Paranormal Ink page to our last episode. We had, he is a medium to the pets. We had Rob Gutro. Um, he's a well-established author. He's getting ready to publish his seventh book. And basically the whole last episode was dealing with communicating with animals and animals communicating with us. So it, um, I, it's, I, will, I will definitely check that out, bro. Yeah, he, uh, he, and, uh, he also gives the, uh, you know, the information how to get his books and every, everything like that. What um what do you guys have coming up, man? You have anything on the books coming up or what? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, but if, if it's okay, uh, before I actually go into like what our future investigations and what the future of the teams want to be doing, uh-huh. I would definitely like to give a shout out to a good friend of mine, sure. someone that has been working tirelessly with the paranormal field. Mm-hmm. I'd like to go ahead and give Tori Smith some recognition. Uh, she is with the Paranormal Help Desk. I have brought her with me today. Um, she has, uh, she, her, she's all about paranormal unity, as you guys know. Right. And, um, she wants to bring teams together and she wants to help them find their place. And she likes to help teams kind of get into the door of places and, and do, do investigation. So she does work hard in her research and she does work hard in the efforts that she puts forward in paranormal. So I want to give her kudos and I want to thank her for everything she has done. Yeah. And, um, oh, thank you. I haven't, I appreciate that. Tori, I haven't met you uh, personally yet, but I, I know we communicate back and Second. forth, you know, through social yeah. media. So any any anywhere along the way, uh, Dave or I, you know, can help you out. Or, for, you know, for whatever reason, just, you know, our phones are always on. You can contact myself or, or my partner here, Dave. And, always. Um, you know, we can do what we can. Absolutely. Thank you. You know, so, uh, 
So what's the haunted scene like in Portland, Oregon? It is, uh, as you guys know, we are famous for the Oregon Trail. Right. And so um, it goes from Independence, Missouri, all the way over towards here. Um, now, I, uh, these guys in here with me right now, uh, girls, I should say, because the majority of my team is made up of females, but, uh, but they've lived here their whole lives. And uh, I did learn something from talking to Stacia. I, I met her the other day in the car. We were going to pick her up and take her somewhere. Well, Stacia had mentioned to something to me about cannibalism happening and the Oregon Trail. Hmm. So I did look it up on the history and stuff like that, and I did actually find cases of where people would eat dead loved ones and stuff to stay alive. Wow. Um, and the, uh, you know what, the, what runs through my mind is what was running through their heads when they had to do that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah. Um, it's funny because our, our guest after you guys is uh, a medium by the name of Melissa Bryan and doing a pre, because I've never spoke to the lady before, but doing a pre-interview with her earlier this afternoon, she is in Portland, Oregon. So I said, today's, wow. today's episode must be the uh, Portland, Oregon <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so, um, you guys wanted to ask earlier about our future investigations. Getting a lot of static on your end. Paul, we're starting to lose you. Does somebody have an open mic or in a car? I'm in a car. All right, it's gone. There you go. There you go. Okay. Tell right. us about the future, so I Paul. To on, I wanted to go on to you guys, and I wanted to talk about a little bit about the places that we are looking to investigate. Um, uh, first of all, if it's okay to give a proper introduction, uh, my name is Paul Bishop. I'm lead investigator and founder of Death Bat Paranormal. Um, you know, I got with me today uh, my new lead investigator, Linda Lopez. Hey, you're getting you're getting drowned out again by the static. Yeah, there you I go. Know. All right, we got okay. you. Good. Okay. All right, good, good deal. Um, but I wanted to basically say that she was with us during our most recent investigation. We did a Powell Grove Cemetery investigation uh -huh. uh, here in Portland, Oregon. Um, it did take an emotional toll on my team uh, because of the stuff we ran into. We ran into a bunch of dead children, mm. um, and we actually Ooh. made spiritual connection with uh, one of the dead children. Right. Uh, they actually came up to one of my uh, team members. Linda, would you like to tell them a little bit about your experience that you had with that? Yeah, all I can really say about that is that one of the children came up to me wanting some sort of comfort, so they just grabbed onto two of my fingers and held on until about midnight that night. Oh, wow. And, wow. Like, it's emotional. It really is. It oh, is. Yeah. That cemetery is in the middle of a highway. It's always loud. They have absolutely no peaceful rest right People there. going and breaking their glasses over their tombstones. The oh, man. The so, the, let, yeah, me get, let me get this straight, guys. You, it, the, the cemetery itself houses a lot of children, is what you're saying? There's a lot yes, of children sir. buried there? Absolutely. Wow. What was... And, uh, was it, um, I mean, what, what was the, were, were, was it separate causes or was it something like the, the, the town experience that caused it all at I once? Believe, I believe I looked at one of the, uh, one of the children's tombstones and I did see they were drowned. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it's always, uh, it's always I, emotional I, when I, you deal with children. Absolutely. Yeah. Whenever I had gotten out to the cemetery, it instantly angered me, uh, -huh. uh because I, I actually felt anguish i felt anger i felt sorrow because these spirits they're from the 1800s of course but right. their bodies where, where it has been buried out there in that cemetery are there's constantly traffic there's constantly people littering on their graves right. there's constant desecration and the city continues to do nothing and it angers well, us because because those spirits are reaching out and they want help yeah that's right. i mean it's one thing you know like from my standpoint I got into investigating the paranormal because since childhood I've been researching it. And, you know, there, there's there been several times, um, you know, I've been in a graveyard or been in a graveyard with a group 
And it was such a respectful, um, you know, spiritual yet emotional experience. And we were always taught as children, you know, respect. you always, when you yep. go into a graveyard, I know even because you can judge like where you think the body is right. buried. You, you wouldn't even walk across nope, it. You nope. would go around go it. Around you know what it. I mean? And that I, I, I completely agree with you 100% that... That's one place, especially the way society is today, mm -hmm. that is one place that you need to consistently be, res you know, respectful is, is definitely a cemetery. Definitely. And, uh, We're looking at this place uh, with a very, very dark history for Oregon. Right. And uh, people are questioning us on it. It is called the Witch's House. Okay. Uh, Witch's Castle. It is a place that we really want to investigate. Uh, uh, excuse me, Paul. You, you, you're okay. Uh, it's the witch's castle. Witch's castle. Okay, correct term. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Okay, so, so I can give you a little bit of the brief history on it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it basically consists of uh, there was a jealous father that was a really bad drunk, mm -hmm. and he had a daughter named Anna, and Anna had gotten a new boyfriend, uh, and he did not want that boyfriend with his daughter, and uh. He forbidden it actually, and he told that man, "If you if you try to elope or you continue being with my daughter, I will kill you." Um, so that man proceeded to be with his daughter anyway and eloped. And uh, I guess in some way, shape, or form, because it didn't give the full history of it, but uh, basically the father, Mister Belch, had uh, convinced the guy to come back. I guess maybe he tricked him with uh, luring him in in some way. Mm -hmm. I have a shotgun and blew him, blew his face off. Ow! Wow. Um, so we, we there has been homeless, there has been homeless people that have stayed out here that claimed that they felt things touched them, and, that claimed that that it was very uneasy for them to stay out there. And but see, there that's also, that's one there was thing. Also a woman, I guess, that got accused of being. I don't know if she got accused of being a witch or what, but I guess some angry mob came out. I guess lynched her or something. Right. I'm not fully uh, uh, updated on that, but it was something I was told of a myth that there was a woman there and she was killed for being different. I don't know if it was over, you know, be, being a witch or whatever, but I think that at the time Oregon was under Puritan rule. And see, this is one thing I, I have to say, and this goes out, I'm not directing this toward you guys, Paul. I'm, say, I'm speaking in, you know, generally speaking, um, people watching or listening that investigate the paranormal, you know, whether you've been doing it for a while, whether you're just doing it now, or, you know, whether you do it is, you know, just to uh, entertain yourself. Uh, I, I, I use that, that term loosely. It, you know, people don't get the, the real gist of why we do this. And before you, sh you investigate any location, my personal opinion is get the history. Um, you know, if you, if you are fortunate enough to make contact, you know, you need to know who, you, who you're dealing with and why they may be trying to communicate with you. Absolutely. It's, you know, everybody's out trying to gather evidence and look at this cool picture, look at this this video, listen to this EVP. But in the same, the same uh, time, I mean, the reason we all do this is to help spirit as well. You know, and that's why it's so important, like you're, you're telling us the backstory at this location, it's so important to know what you're going into and who you possibly may be dealing with because it, we're not just out there to help the client we got to look out for the spirit too absolutely you know we're the chosen ones that may be fortunate enough to communicate and i just feel that's our responsibility as investigators around the world you got to be there for the spirit as well and be respectful along the way you know what i mean absolutely i agree with you guys 110 percent. that's why we do this paul um I don't mean to cut you and Tori and the rest of your crew off, but I am four minutes behind on getting our next guest in. Um, Dave and I want to thank you. Wish you guys all the best. Yep, you yep. know how to get in touch with us. Keep it spooky, brother. I'm monitoring your, your pages, your channels, everything like that. And if anybody needs to get in touch with Paul or Ghost Bat or Tori or anyone, they're out of Portland, Oregon. They're on Facebook, or you can come through me, and I will get you in touch with them. Absolutely, brother. I appreciate your opportunity. Paul, Tori, and everyone else that joined us, thank you for taking time out of your Sunday evening. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, keep in touch, my brother, okay?
All right, one love. All right, brother. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. That sounds like an awesome team out there. Yes, we may sir. Have to, we may have to do, hit the Oregon well, they, Trail, um, brother. They they offered, um, you know, any investigations that they go on or whatever that you know we're welcome to go with them. Nice. So I'm working on something for the summer to team up with them. So nice. Um, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna call our. Uh, Next guest? Next guest. Hello? Melissa. Yo. Hey, this is Ernie. You're, and this you're is Dave. How you Ernie doing? Oh, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Hang on. Let me go to the other room. It's a little noisy in here. I apologize. No okay, worries. No problem. No worries. Okay, there we go. So how's your day going, Melissa? Oh, a little rough. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm a psychic medium. Uh, I was born like this, so <laughs> not really much I can do about it. You know how it is. <laughs> um, and I wrote a book called Born Into Shamanism. It's my life, walk, and work, and journey with spirit uh -huh. throughout my life in my own words. Mm -hmm. Nice. Past well life, present life. And anything else that I've learned throughout this existence, I guess you could say. Right. Um, Melissa, being a, an avid reader and a collector of books, where can I, and along with everyone else that's listening and watching, where can we get your book from? Amazon Kindle. Amazon Kindle. Okay. I got to break my Kindle out again, huh? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> What um? How do we find it when we go on there? Uh, just type in "born into shamanism" and the book will come up. Excellent. Okay. Can you give us a little bit of an overview about it? And um, you know, where did it start? Why did you do it? All that kind of stuff. Well, basically, it all started really with spirit and my ancestors all saying, "Look, you've got to write a book. You've got to write a book." I mean, they were just asking <laughs> constantly on that. Um. I was just like, all right, fine. I'll sit down. I'll just type something out. Maybe it'll work. First couple versions, not so great. So I kind of picked it up again, took another look at it. I go, oh, God, this is awful. So I tore it all down, tore it all out, completely rewrote the whole thing from the ground up. <laughs> I'm really actually very proud of the final version. That's good. Awesome. How long has it been out? Oh my God, it's been out now a few years. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. And this is a this is a very broad question. Okay. I'm ha about halfway through writing my first book. It, okay. It is nonfiction. It, okay. It is basically on why I started researching the paranormal, how I got into the paranormal, and how my spirituality and religious beliefs coincide with the paranormal and all come together oh, as great, one. Oh, yeah. Yours for mine. <laughs> what do you have... i you. Yours for mine. <laughs> <laughs> Being halfway through it and still trying to work hard on it, do you have any advice that you can give me to keep trucking ahead? Just do it. Look, if your heart says do it, do it. If your ancestors are bugging you constantly going, write that damn book, write that damn book, <laughs> do it. Just trust me. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Well, I, I tell you, what what kind of inspired me, it's, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I kind of, I just didn't know how to get started, and I guess I was kind of scared, you know what I mean? Because yeah. oh, I didn't... Oh, God, I told you. I, I didn't, totally know what you mean. I was terrified to write that book. I didn't want to start was, and kind of feel like I was failing right from the beginning and yeah, then lose yeah, interest. No, I, I totally hear you. No, I, I, believe me, I hear you. I know the feeling. But what what the turning point for me was, a very good friend of ours, and she's watching now, Miss Cisco Murdoch, she has her own radio podcast as well, and... Awesome lady. Back awesome, in the awesome, awesome. back in the beginning days of Paranormal Inc., um, when Dave and I took this thing solo, we were on her radio show, and right. short, shortly after, 
Um, I was on my way to work one night, and Cisco and I talked for about a good hour while I was driving to work, and she suggested that I write a book. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about this for so long. And then our, our good friend, um, Ted from Paratalk Radio, who gave us right. our opportunity to have this podcast, he he asked me to uh, do a foreword for his second book, which I did. And right. that was just, that was so inspiring to me. And I felt... I felt so honored that, that Ted asked me to do that, and I felt so proud when Cisco said that I should do that, that it kind of put the, the fire under my butt and said, hey, stop being lazy and stop being scared and, and do this thing. So, right, right. you know, it, it's it's going well. It's just, it's a lot of work, which, I mean, you know better than yeah, I do. Oh, 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 been there, done that, yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, um, I wrote... You know, I just wrote this as just sort of a fun thing to do, you know. And, I mean, it was work. Don't get me wrong. It was work. Um, but I compiled all of my experiences, my knowledge, everything I'd learned from not only just my ancestors, but from, you know, some of my predecessors who are actually very famous psychic mediums themselves. Mm-hmm. James Von Prague, uh, Miss Sylvia Brown, God rest her soul, God love her. Love you, Sylvie. Um, and, you know, so many others, and Derek Akar also rest his soul, God rest in peace, love you, hon. Um. Is that, Melissa, I don't mean to cut you off, Sylvia Brown, is that the same Sylvia Brown that published the books? Yes, sir. She okay, was I, one of my inspirations. I actually, you know I've actually read her books. Yes, so have I. Wow. I have almost her entire collection, uh, there's a few I don't have yet. Uh-huh but I do plan on eventually getting them or copies thereof. Um, but, you know, she was the one when I was first, when I was 21, things were getting really hot, hot and popping, you know, things were just coming out left field. I mean, it was weird. Don't get me wrong. It scared me a good deal. I thought, oh, great, no, shoot. Oh, damn it. What now? Uh, they're going to lock me away. They're going to medicate the out of me, you know. <laughs> oh my God, my life is over. Uh, no. Ancestors came from spirit and said, "You're going to be a shaman." Uh, I'm going to be a what? <laughs> uh, imagine this jaw on the floor. Uh, going. Uh, you know, you kind of told me sooner. Maybe that I wouldn't have been so. I've been scared out of my dang wit. If um for those well, those listening watching, if they need to get in contact with you, how can they get in contact with you? And I read Sylvia Brown's book. It was recommended to me by someone I've had a falling out with now for uh-huh. several years, former colleague now, um, who I won't speak to anymore, and will remain nameless as of forever. Uh-huh. Um, I read Sylvia Brown's book, and the light bulb turned on. I go, oh. Battle? Really? Melissa, the how can for those that are watching and listening, how can they get in contact with you if, if they need you? If they... Uh, they can get in contact with me through my website, https colon backslash backslash psychic p s y c h i c mom m o m Mary Oscar Mary mm-hmm. all one word lowercase two zero one seven dot wix site w i x ray x is an x ray um site s i t e wix site all one word lowercase dot com backslash melissa bry okay awesome awesome well we don't mean to cut you short but we have two other one other guest and then we have a whole bunch of stuff to cover from last night so thank you for di- taking some time on a sunday with us please keep in touch oh, with don't us worry. Will do. Thank you much. And if if I'm fortunate enough to get that book published, we're gonna we're gonna swap one, okay? Perfect. I'm Sounds go- great. I'm I'll gonna read hold. It, believe me. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> one love. Yeah, and I'll get you mine autographed if you want to forward me uh, like some mailing information. I can get it to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Melissa, Thank for you. Uh, taking Thank some time you. out of your Sunday, and uh, keep Thank in you. keep in touch with us, okay? Will do. 
too. Yeah, if you ever want me back on, hey, just call her. You got it. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm, Okay, we got one more co uh, guest coming in, and then we're going to be discussing uh, about that. Uh oh, I got a message. I got a message here. See, because I'm hot. Look, check this out. We, 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 we I'm, have, I'm high tech now. I, I got him a computer. I can actually see stuff now. I can't respond, but I can see. Yeah, he, when he responds, <laughs> he completely messes up. So I'm like, don't touch it. Anyway, Just look. Hey. our next guest. I'll, I'll take his five minutes. All right, we'll, we'll take his five minutes. All right. Our next guest was Brian Pierce. From? From the Heritage Museum in Essex, Maryland. Yep. He's throwing the History and Haunts on April 4th, okay? Brian just messaged me and had an emergency and told me he cannot come on live. I didn't ask no questions. Brian, he said, yeah, cool. I hope everything's good, Brian. Um, he said he would love if we can have him on our next episode. Yep. Most definitely. definitely. So. Basically, he was going to plug the event. Okay, when's the event? Where's the event? How's the event? It is April 4th. It's on a Saturday. All right. The Heritage Museum in Essex, Maryland. It's the Police and Fire Museum. We have investigated it twice. And it's awesome. So has Pam and Steve. Yep. Kendra. I believe Anthony and Dina have uh, Mike investigated King. it. Mike was with us both times. It is a very, very cool location. And very active. The event is from 10 until 4. I believe the doors open either 9.30 or 9.45. 10.4. Now, some of the guests that I can think of, please forgive me. If message I in it. if I leave you out. Uh, Dave and I will be there. Mike King will be there. Anthony and Dina. Kendra. Um, Pam and Steve. Uh, Dustin Parry from Ghost Hunters International and the original Ghost Hunters, he will be there. Um, Kelly Miller, who is going to be our special guest in two weeks at the Sam Miller Mansion, the Maven Medium, she will be there as well. Okay, um, There's a whole list. Uh, you can check our Paranormal Inc. page. The whole rundown Jack is on Hanna there. Jack is going to be there. Jack Hanna is? Yep. Okay, Thanks, Jack. Eric. Thanks, Eric. Eric, you better, be, Eric, you better be there. Uh, Eric, Eric Julian's going to be there. He just, he didn't say that, but I just volunteered him. There you go, <laughs> Eric. You're, you, you better start packing now. Um, Jack Hanna, real cool dude. Yeah, I love Jack. Hanna. Uh, Jack Hanna and Carly, you see them on the Travel Channel. Yep. And um, so yeah, that that that's basically what Brian was going to talk about. Um, I, I'm not sure how much tickets are. Um, they're they're not really that that much. Yeah. So if you want a Saturday and they away all go for, to the restoration yeah, for a few hours, man, yeah. come on down. Because the way the place is set up, it's not just your open like hall and, and you're set up. It's an actual museum. So the way it sounds is like the vendors are going to be along the way of the trail of the museum. So it's going to be really good. So April 4th, all the information's on Paranormal Inc. Brian, we wish you the best, man. We hope nothing major is wrong and if there's anything you need from any of us you got my phone number give me a call definitely now dun, 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 dun. now hopefully my something just happened to my phone but the watch party I don't hopefully my watch party still going if not I apologize my phone just freaked out all right so let's go to last night so we were over at the uh, Prince what we call the princess house in York Pennsylvania uh, sponsored by York Ghost Tours. Miss Laura Shari. We Laura, love you, sweetie. Mwah, love you, baby. So we get there. Um, there's not a lot of people, which is great. You know, I love smaller groups, too. And it started out kind of really slow. Well, when we first got there, it was, uh, I think it was just Dave. And, was it just Dave and I? Yeah. Dave and I and, and Dave's Grace. daughter, Grace. So Dave was downstairs getting a few things set. And I went upstairs into the first main bedroom right. and I figured hey I'll, I'll do a, a quick EVP session just just see if you know we get anything so I'm sitting in the chair like I am now and I'm facing out of the bedroom okay you got the hallway you got the other little room and at the far end there's a door that connects them so I'm just sitting there you know asking questions your basic EVP questions and it seems kind of quiet however the adjacent bedroom I saw what appeared to be about a three-foot, now get this, a white shadow 
it darted out from the bedroom into the hallway. And, you know, I, I continued to stay there when I was done my questions. I did a one EVP burst that was a minute and nine seconds. Okay. At exactly about a minute eight, you hear a very fast and distinct help, which completely caught me off guard because I listened for the whole minute and few seconds and got nothing till the very, very end, and I, I, I captured a voice saying help. Um, but then, Dave, all the, the footsteps and knocks and all that good stuff started. Nice, nice, nice. You know, um, everyone, I think, just, it was so many personal experiences. It, uh, you know, it was. If you want to elaborate on that a little bit, and then... Well, um, we had a lot of people... Um, Seeing things, feeling things, sensing things. Um, if the camera moves, we apologize. I just had a friend join me. My dog came down. Um, it looks like my watch party crashed, so I started another one. So I apologize for that. Um, if you hit F5 on yours, you should be able to get to it. Um, so, um, but then Ernie came up with a very interesting idea. So we were downstairs. We had investigated the second floor a little bit. Got got a little bit, not nothing big. We got third floor. We actually did a phasma box. Got a little bit of interaction, which was really cool. Uh, tried a couple new experiments. The pencil experiments. Haley didn't work at all over there, which was very interesting. Um, but the Phasma box, we picked up on some things. So Ernie, we're downstairs taking a break, and we're like, all right, why don't we just do a... I'll let you take over from there. What we did was, um, I mean, you, you've seen it before. We do what is called an isolation session. Um, I'll be in a different room, and I will have my earphones or earbuds whatever and i'll be running it through a a voice box now all i'm hearing is the the static and all that very amplified so that i can't hear the crowd plus i'm in a different room um the objective of the experiment is for the group to ask questions but ask the respondents to respond to me Right. So basically, I have no idea what's going on in the other room, what they're talking about or making fun of me or whatever their questions are involving. And I'll be getting the responses through the spirit box, through my headphones. And as the session goes on, I just blurt out what is being told to me. Right. So he has full headsets on. He can't hear what we're doing unless we're screaming and hollering. He might hear a little bit of it. Well, the only thing I could hear was at one point, I don't know what the question was because I haven't viewed it yet. What the question was or what the response was, but I heard everybody, ooh, ah, you know, and I'm like, oh, it must have been something good. <laughs> but So now I've only taken a few clips of the uh, the se first session. We did two sessions total uh, and a Phasma box. So we, this is only a couple little segments of the first session. The full video is up on our YouTube channel already. You're welcome to go watch that, but not until you finish watching us. <laughs> Hold on, stand by. Here it comes. So I have a whole bunch of equipment over here again. And at this point, I have a, a something that I can actually record you with if you can make it go off. I have nothing on me. That is a solid red hit. The phone's over there. <laughs> Just let's see if it responds to you. Do you like me standing here? <laughs> no. I don't know if it likes you. Is it Liam's mother inside of the kitchen? Wow. My hands are really cold right now. This question is for Liam's mother. Did you by chance commit suicide after your son died? Yes. Holy monkey. Okay. I'm going to sit in the kitchen by myself. Okay. And I'm going to run a spirit box through my headphones. Okay. So I won't be able to hear what you're saying. Okay. But direct all the questions to me. Okay. And yes. I'll, I'll blurt out the responses so you all can hear. Okay. okay. I'll end it because I don't want you guys sneaking up on me. And... Do you want me to come tap you by the door? No. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a little girl that lived in this house named Lynn? 
If it was, go tell Ernie Lynn. Basement. In the basement? Ooh, yes. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, Lynn, is that you? Maybe in the basement? Michelle. <laughs> she heard you. Are you in the basement? First you ask. Is Michelle your name? Michelle. Wait, in the basement? Are you, is Wait. Michelle in the basement? Michelle, were you by chance a, what's the, what were your slaves called? Help, help. Were, were you a help? A were you, helper? Where is it? Do it. Where is it? Do it? Should we go down? We're here. We're here? Should we go down to the basement? Are you in the basement? KT is still going off randomly. There's that. Michelle, did you live go, in Michelle. the basement? Michelle, did you live in the basement? Were you locked in the it's basement? Tom. Michelle, were you kidnapped? I don't know why, it's just, something tells me something about that. Is a man in here, is his name Tom? The grandfather, perhaps? Is he Tom? Michelle, yeah. did yeah. something yeah. bad happen to you? Get you. Get you. Uh -huh. Who are Wait, you we're getting get? re responses from, wow. Who are you going to get? Are we supposed to be afraid of you? Michelle? Down the basement. Yeah, down the basement, wow. Are you okay, Michelle? I'm getting, we're getting it so fast that it's either here or there. It's like... Is somebody here? Is somebody keeping you here? Anna. Is somebody keeping you here? Is somebody named Anna keeping you here? Is Tom keeping you here? Yeah. I'll be honest. Could you go tell Ernie Tom. what happened to you? You. You. <laughs> Give us the name of the person you want to come. Who do you want to go tell Arnie? Jen. Damn! Uh -huh. Wow, Arnie. Arnie? <laughs> you don't understand what we're getting. Look up. Uh -huh. Do it. Distance. Do you want me to go upstairs? Who's up here? This is... <laughs> we are. Yes. Hey. Oh, wow. Good. Second floor? There's so much happening. Third floor. Was Tom a bad man? Lisa. Nothing. It, it was. They want you to go up. Can she, somebody go with her? Can Tom come with me? I'm getting a little girl coming through. Sounds like she's about one or two years old and she's trying to fall. When you All right, so I'm going to pull the video and uh, kind of discuss a little bit about what you've seen. There's a lot more to this uh, up on our YouTube channel. But one of the things is, Ernie, all right, so I'm watching a mantle fireplace like right here. And all the equipment's up on the top. Ernie's to my left, and behind him is a kitchen. So first thing is, we keep hearing things all around, and it's maddening. And so Ernie's saying stuff, and he's saying his words, and then it's responding to us via the REM pod, via whatever, um, and we're going nuts. Um, but from there, I look over, and there's a window behind Ernie, and I can see the light out the window. 
and I see a head come in like this, looking right behind him. And I used a choice word at that point, and I went diving to him, and it just it vanished right behind him into a wall. Um, and I, you know, I seriously thought somebody was behind him, and there was nobody in the kitchen on him, with him. Um, he, at the same time, was saying he heard footsteps behind him. So, the place is really active. It's really spooky. We're going to make a couple phone calls real quick. Um, Sue, I know you're watching. We're going to call you. Um, we want your opinion. We also want, uh, we're probably going to call um, Andy. Give him a shout. And uh, I have a, another friend who came down wondering what's going on. My cat just came down. So, if you suddenly hear weird things and the camera starts shaking, I apologize. They're not supposed to be down here, but they, they got lonely upstairs without us. Because they're used to us doing the show I'm upstairs. I'm calling uh, Andy first. I messaged Sue to see if she was available. Very cool. I'm waiting to hear back. Yo, Ern. Yo, brother. You're live, What's Andy. Up? You're live on the air with us. All right. So, Very um, good. so give me your opinion of last night. Tell me what you saw. Tell me what you heard, and tell me what impressed you, and what did you like, and anything creepy that happened. I mean, honestly, it was just one of those things. It was, uh, when we went down to after. Laura was there and she said, you know, try the first floor, you know, and, and that's when we took a little break and I remember I was sitting at the end of that table and you could just hear what sounded like footsteps in the kitchen and that's why I kept telling Mary, I'm like, yo, dude, something's in this kitchen, you know, it was un unmistakable. So that's when, you know, we started everything and you had everything going on. And the, well, uh, the Dave left point. out, Andy, Dave left out the part when I was sitting with my back to the kitchen doing the isolation session. You didn't say what you saw yet. No, I said with the ha face coming in behind oh, okay. you. Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah, the, the face behind him, but I, I was also seeing shadows behind you as well, Ernie. And then remember, Ernie, you were sitting there, and it was uh, more towards the end, and there was a noise to your left, and it would have been my right. And we yeah. both heard at the same time. And you even heard it over the earbuds. That's how... Yeah, that's how loud, loud it, the crackle sound. We actually, if you remember, Andy, I recreated that sound... When Correct. when I opened that drawer, it was like a hutch. Correct. But it was loud. Whatever it was, it was loud enough that I heard it over the voice box with earbuds in. Oh, wow. Now I yes. couldn't even hear you guys talking in the next room. Yeah, because I was but shouting. I, and I heard that. Yeah, so it was loud. It actually made me jump because of oh, course wow. I mean I wasn't expecting it. You know. Yeah. Now and and I mean even you said you saw a white shadow up on, I believe it was the second floor. And I remember I saw the same exact thing coming out of the wall. And it wasn't just me. Uh, Sue's daughter saw the same exact thing at the same exact time. Like, you saw that, right? You know, it was like a white shadow came out the door. Right. Uh, and, uh, and then I remember we were on the third floor, and you were sitting in the chair, in the metal chair for, you know, a little bit, and then got up. And then myself and Stu and yourself were standing at the door well, and it sounded like, Somebody went to that chair, chair. And no one was there. Yeah. Wow. It, the the tin, the metal chair actually creaked or cracked or whatever it, it, it Yeah, does. it was, you know, you couldn't mistake it, you know, here in that metal chair. Right. What's your, over, what's your overall opinion of the Prince's House, Andy? I love that place. It's nice, isn't love it? it. I, I honestly cannot wait to go back. Nice, nice. Absolutely so, love it. I mean, it just, it, last night was just nonstop. Now, did things sound like they were making sense when Ernie was over in the kitchen, you know, earbudded, and uh, we were uh, out in the living room, and did things kind of line up to you? Everything lined up. The questions that you guys were asking Spirit were the answers that Ernie was getting through the box. And you know what I mean? And, and, and it was just on cue, on cue. I mean... You ask a question, you got a direct response. Now, I didn't uh, see the whole video, but even though you guys are saying the the response is lined up, wasn't some of the equipment also? Yep. So, oh, like, it um, was all going off simultaneously. There, yeah, it was literally, I kept, was we were bouncing back and forth from listening to what you were saying to trying to keep up with the equipment. To right. listening, and it was literally going back and forth, back and forth. Right. And even at but one it point, getting intense. it said, uh, they said something like, who do you want to go upstairs? And you yelled out, Jen. And I said, is anybody yeah. allowed to go with, with? And they, she said, Tom, and the yes, like him. So it's literally 
was going like this. Yeah. And to the point where you're going, Dave, it's going nuts. And we were going, yeah, it's going nuts over here, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Because, I, I, like I said, at one point, I went through a brief period where the device just went completely silent. And yes. then all of a sudden, I don't know what you guys started asking, what topic you were on, but it just went haywire. Well, they hit a name that, that was named Michelle. Apparently, Michelle, it sounds like, was Liam's mother. And, Lee, and she hurt herself in the kitchen. And that's right after that is when you heard the bumps. Okay. Yeah. But it was intense, though, because, Dave, we went outside right after that that whole thing. I mean, you were shaking. You were like, oh, my God, you know, I've never seen it. Yeah, like I was literally doing this because, I mean, how fast it was coming. In, yeah. And it, it was it, getting intense, too. I mean, it was getting, like, you could tell whoever that male presence there was getting pissed off. We think his you know, name was Tom. And uh, that that was just scary as heck. The freakiest thing that happened for me last night, it's kind of funny. Um, two times in the same spot in the living room at two different times, it literally felt like someone came up and went <sighs> on the back of my neck. Well, what about towards the end of the night when you were walking out of the hallway? Yes. And you said, we, what's up? And I'm like, I didn't say nothing. We, we were concluding that session upstairs, and we were leaving the bedroom. And when I come out of the bedroom, I said to you, Andy, I said, hey, man, I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. I got to hit the restroom. And as I start to go down the hallway, I heard somebody say, hey, Ernie. And it sounded like Andy. And I turned around, and I said, what's up? And he's like, what? And I was like, what? And I, it, no, I, anyway, yeah, but it did. It, I, I, I thought you called me. It, oh, it wow. sounded, yeah. Yeah, that place is something. I, I honestly... What I like about it, though, I, I think that was our third event we've yeah, had there. Absolutely. Things are so sporadic that it's hard to come to a conclusion of what we might think it is or, or could possibly be there. We've hit so many different spirits like there. Like, last night, we got so many uh, footsteps. We got the kids giggling on the Phasma box multiple times. And I got that same thing through the spirit box. If you listen to that one point, I said, hey, I got a, it sounds like a little kid laughing at now, me. Now, here's the one thing. Yeah, and you could hear it. I mean, we, even when we were on the other floor, I believe uh, we were on the the second or third floor at one point. But it, and it, you could hear kids just coming through constantly. It was so many knocks and bangs and footsteps like but when we were running the obelisk and you got the ledge. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well later on my daughter who um I think she's something starting to kick in on her because she's starting to see some things at this point. She said she pulls me aside and says, Dad, I, I'm getting this thing of a little boy named Liam who fell off of a ledge, and then later on, we were, we were kind of going through the house, and she noticed that there's a ledge along the stairwell at the top, where, enough where a kid could shimmy out, and if he fell, and He's she going, said to me, yeah. Dad, I could see him falling, and he went arm first, and his arm broke, and his head hit the stair, and I'm like, oh! And she's t describing literally what happened, so we started asking about it during the session, which was what but ramped several things up. Times, several times throughout the isolation session, I think twice to be exact, uh, the name Liam come across, as yep. well as the Phasma yes. box. Leah and Michelle. Leah and Michelle. Yep. Leah. Now, my first thought, because we had our friend Michelle, she came last night down from Jersey as well, and, you know, when we first started that session, one of the very first responses I got was somebody said Michelle. And you said Michelle, and she went, what? She's she three, said, two yes. floors up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It no, was interesting it was, to say the least. That was a no, wild, was, wild thing. It was. It, it was a very good night. You know what the other thing? When we were listening to the children, and then at 9 o'clock, children were gone. Like, absolutely gone. And yeah. then we started thinking, well, maybe it was, you know, like bedtime per se. But they were gone. They were out of the picture at that point at 9 p.m. Yeah. It, well, it was all, you're, you're absolutely well. correct. It was like all of a sudden... That session we were doing, everything just went completely flat, yep. and it was completely done. Yep. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was definitely wild. I mean, I just kept replaying in my head, you know, my drive home back to Dirty Jersey. I just kept replaying everything back in my head. I'm like, man, what a crazy night that was. Right. Yep. Absolutely. It never disappoints. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, we are about out of time for the night. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. 
And, I appreciate uh, the call, guys, and I appreciate you know you guys uh, doing these things. Yeah, no doubt. We, you know, so got a couple of events coming up in the future. We'll talk about them in a minute, but uh, lots of love, got bro. It. All right, talk to you later. All right, see ya. See ya, Andy. My, my watch party just ended again. Uh-oh, Dave's over here screwing up everybody. No, it just literally, it just ended again. So I do apologize. It's something going on with Facebook, guys. The watch party is just, it keeps dumping out. So I don't know why it's doing that, but I got plenty of signal. It's just Facebook twice now has dropped my watch party. All right, guys. Well, we got a couple of events coming up. Um, Paranormalink.com, uh, or .net, I'm sorry. Paranormalink.net right here. Um, and we have our calendar up there. We have our YouTube up there. And we have our um, Facebook page. Hit our calendar. It, our calendar has everything you need to know up through July, up through the bash on it at this point. Um, we, we've got events coming up in two weeks, three weeks, all our paracons, oh, everything. Man. Yeah. So we, we are busier than one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. All our friends that will be at the April 4th event at the Heritage Museum, we're looking forward to hanging out with you guys. And, uh, Most you know, definitely. it's been a long weekend. You know what I mean? Um, again, Brian Pierce, hope everything's okay. Uh, I know you said you have an emergency. I hope it, it, it's nothing serious. Um, Deathbat Paranormal, thank you for speaking with us. And Tori from Paranormal Hotline, thank you for joining us as well. And uh, Miss Melissa Bryan, it was a lot of fun meeting you and speaking to you. We'll have you on again, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting that book. Uh, Dave, you have anything before we go? Well, I found out my watch party didn't crash. It was still live when it didn't end. Woohoo! So hopefully everybody kept the video on. But thank you all. Um, definitely join us. Sam Miller Mansion is our next event. Uh, that place is freaky fun active. Um, yeah, it's good, good spot. Check our videos out on YouTube. Hit a like for us. Send it out. Have lots of people hit like on it. Uh, Sam Miller Mansion was really active last time we were there. So. Yeah, it's going to be a good night. Like I said, just announced we're going to have... Um, Kelly Miller with us. Mike King is supposed to show his face up there. Um, so uh, if you haven't got your tickets, get them. Uh, uh, Toursonlocust.com. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And uh, we will see you in two weeks on uh, Saturday night and then for our episode on Sunday. Sound like a plan. Guys, one love. Peace out. See you later. Bye.